you. I think all the insights are really valuable. Uh, let's see if they have one presentation. If not, I can right here. Um, in my case, I graduated in the third year because I had to come back to my country for some issues. So, but indeed, uh, the process started in my second year and I had to, we can say, convince the advisor, okay? I make a good presentation just for him, uh, show him why I want to research that topic, with what is the knowledge I am looking for, and where, where was everything headed. So he, he liked it at that time, and after one year, I, I, I keep working in that direction. So after 200 papers I read, and 50 books from classic economy, modern economy, even Marx's economy, all the theories, I could graduate. It was quantitative. I was not qualitative. So I, I know also qualitative is really challenging, but that doesn't mean quantitative is not challenging either. If you don't like to read, so you have a warning there. So we're gonna see some hints that I prefer for you because I have some friends in China as well. They have been asking me about specifically how to improve their process. So that's why I recorded this for them. And we have some goals, okay? First, we need to be clear about the goals. We're gonna check it. Challenges, what tools can be useful for, uh, in, let's say, successfully overthrow the challenges, and then some questions, okay? Okay, basically, we need to be clear what is our goal, right? Everyone say, oh, gradually. Okay, my, my, my goal is gradually. Are you sure? Are you sure? Be before this, we have secondary goals. It's made the thesis. But before the thesis, we have other things. It's to learn. We need to learn first. Because if you don't know about your thesis, the topic, your field, um, it's gonna be difficult trying to make the thesis just with the knowledge you bring from home or from your previous experiences. So, what I'm trying to say is like, all we came here is to break that barrier from our current capacity to the next level. So, basically the thesis is that barrier that if we don't cross from our current state, we're never gonna accomplish. So to do that, we need to understand certain drivers. We're gonna, we're gonna check later in the, in the tools. So the main goal to know how to do the thesis for you first in your second, first year as a student is start reading as a crazy person to know what you need to know, to understand the topic and to comprehend all the theories, at least two, three theories, minimum, if not all of them, and the historic process about that specific field. Imagine your, your, your topic is this point, and this is your field, so you're trying to just talk about this point without understanding the whole picture. So it's, it's not doable. You're gonna start shooting, and then the professor is like, what is this? So it doesn't make sense. So the thing is that you need to understand the field itself. So that means you need to read extra papers, not, cor not directly related to the topic. It's, it's related to the field you're studying. In that order, you will comprehend the whole picture. That, that's, that's one insight, right? Um, some phrase? Okay. So this is the goal, we talk about it. To know what? The field, right? To understand where is your topic located in the field. And then to comprehend 
which theories right now and history process are in current discussion, we can say. Current discussion or previous discussion. And then all that is going to take you to, to learn, actually. Yeah. Um, the challenge is going to be bias resources. Uh, and you need to try to read and understand. And there's something called known unknowns. That is like, I know I want to study this topic, but I don't know what, needs, what I need to study this. I don't know the, the, the surrounding points I need to study. So you just know your topic. So that's a no unknown. And then you have something called unknowns unknowns. <laughs> so how you how you gonna know what you don't know that you need to know? <laughs> it's reading, is is reading in the surrounding areas. You say, oh, I didn't know. I need to know this in order to write this and then to comprehend this or to explain this. Okay, all these are the challenges. And no expected results can drive you to, we can say, desperation, frustration, and you need to be like, find counseling. I have a moment, I talk with Jai when I want to give up, and he gave me the second hand and push, and I keep going, and I did it. So you need to be like close with your friends, psychology, whatever, <laughs> and understand it's like nobody is against you, okay? The school is not very against you, the professor, the advisor, the staff. So if your thesis or your results in your data set doesn't work, it's not personal. Doesn't work, it's because it doesn't work. Nobody is against you, okay? And this, um, this is try to don't give up and restart, okay? Don't give up. So the tools to, to, to conquer the challenge, first we have something called serif, serif, uh, serif, 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 serif. Okay, who knows what it means? Who knows the meaning of the tools? Yes. Who knows? Yes. Are you sure? Okay? For example, I'm gonna explain you an example. You go to a Halloween party, okay? And in that Halloween party, you start talking with the people that randomly are there. And then you have a specific interest, interesting in, I don't know, art. And you find someone who loves art. Oh, you start talking and then you date and wherever. So that's a, that's a coincidence because you are in a random situation where you don't expect certain, you say, conclusions, okay, or results. So, how do you apply this in the academic field? For example, you try to go here, so you just read papers about that. Just read paper about this field. So, serendipity is to find something you are not looking for in some, some some place, somewhere else, okay? For example, this is economic, let's say, of oh, this market. So you start reading all the paper about, I don't know, anthropology. Close enough, okay? But not directly related. Close enough, but not directly related. So you can read a paper or listen to a podcast or watch a biography, and suddenly in that content, you're gonna find, oh, things that are related to your to your topic. Or maybe you are stuck, the, the blank paper, and you, you, you don't know how to continue that chapter. So you pull out yourself of this focus of view and try to find resources in other fields, in other content, even uh, not related to academic paper, it can be books, not related books, and then you're reading something and they talk about some, some key driver is going to help you to continue and say, oh, okay, I get this. And you can transpolate that topic to your topic and then you can keep, keep going. Okay? Second, well, comprehension, we'll talk about that. Uh, the resources to, to apply the first one, as I say, can be, for example, as crazy as it sounds, podcasts. 
I, I was listening a podcast about this girl who likes to, you know, she don't like this her job. She prepared deaf people before they go to Puerto Rico. She was, this topic not related to economy, not related, I, I talk about cryptocurrency, not related at all, but she, she talked about some techniques and steps that make sense in, in, in that field. And then I, I searched papers about that, and, and there's some homolo homologation from that thing in the other. And it's like, oh, you find from an uh, unexpected resource. Okay? So with the books, papers, podcasts, and as much as you like. Then we have constructed scheme. What is this about? What I did was before before showed my advisor what I have. I start working in the known knowns, all that, and I make a list, okay? Now you read as a crazy and you have all random knowledge in different locations in your mind. So you make a list and start writing it down point by point, and then you're gonna find certain logical, and so what you, with well, this random list, we, we can call it like, you are building a random list. So then you, you're gonna construct the content, okay? And I'm gonna make the skin more uh, with the guidance. <coughs> to try to, to put everything, but not go directly to write. Just make the, the titles, all the structure, the subtitles, the chapter, that all fix to the guidance. When you have all that, you say, Professor, what do you think I have planned to write this. You don't have anything, but you have all the the chapters of your pieces, all finished. And say, oh, looks good, but this chapter not gonna help you. Try this other. Oh, this theory not gonna help you. Try this other. Oh, you need to include three more things. Or you are in this content, you say, oh, here, you talk about gains. Right, but you didn't say about, now we are talking about the context. You say, all I was explaining was uh, the context to reach the context. So now in the context, say, oh, the professor can say, you talk about Keynes, but you didn't say he tried to make a uh, bank core, okay? So, oh, I talk about theory, but I didn't say uh, a proposal. So historical process, so, ah, so now I can modify the content and submit with him again. And when I say yes, work in that, in that moment you start writing. Because you have the, the, the guy, your own content guy. With the topic, with the theme, with the abstract, all that. Um, that was the previous thing I was saying. Okay, now, going more specific. Just, just with this, you are, you are unable to go. <laughs> just with this, you can write a thesis. Okay, this is more literary review, just some specific things. Uh, you, you might find uh, in a situation you are biased and you don't know. Uh, everyone eventually will find out. If you want to be an academic master or PhD, you, you need to reevaluate your own. So you, you, you have your theory. When you came, you need to challenge your own theories. Okay, you need to challenge what you consider is the absolute truth. There's no absolute truth. So then you go, you find second theory, or maybe three, four, five, and so what? What you gonna do? You're gonna go just with one because it's the one that fits to the data set or the results you want, and you're gonna ignore what you find. You're gonna do that because you are biased. Okay, so what you need to do is reconciliate the, these two approach and understand and how you're gonna uh, position these two approach in the in the real life. Okay, with some uh, let me find you. For example, the fifth, you find out the theorem number one is aligned with reality and history. Okay, okay, let's say it's the number two is not that aligned, okay? But you need to explain it somehow because 
If not, this guy doesn't know. You need to explain how this is not correlated with the reality and, and history. And then the three. So then, oh, in your literary review, you mention it. You mention it and you explain it. And that way, now you can say, I not be biased because I already mentioned this happened, and this and this and this, and with the other one, um, we have these other results, okay? Somehow you, you figure it out. Um, as a reality, I want to say political events, economic shocks, or social developments and changes. Okay, that's basically what I'm trying to say. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Let, me, uh, let me share something with you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> yeah, like, um, uh, Christian, um, when he, uh, I think he, he proposed to have uh, the oral defense, uh, I, I think at that time, you know, he, he, he thought that he was kind of uh, ready. And then, but when he uh, talked to the advisor, and then the advisor think uh, maybe um, his direction is not exactly uh, what the professor is looking for. Mm -hmm. And so when I knew it, and then I, I talked to Christians and, and I asked him to send me uh, his thesis. And then I actually read it and I thought, wow, he has done so many things. He read a lot of papers, articles, and, and so on. So for that part, it's perfectly, uh, it's, it's perfect. But then, now the problem is like, because uh, he did not have uh, too many contacts with the professors. And so when mm. he finished his thesis, and then he thought he, he did a very good job, and then but, you know, from the professor's point of view, uh, I don't even know what you are doing. And maybe I want this direction, but you, you provide me a lot of things. And so I want you to restructure that. So then, and I read his thesis, and then I also gave you some uh, suggestions, and then asked him to <clears throat> talk to the professor. And then so he knew what professor wants, and then he tried to take out something, and then maybe add something. And then afterwards, the professor is satisfied about this, and then he went for the oral defense. So this experience uh, tells us, you know, you have to keep contact with your advisor. Uh, don't just uh, work on the topic and then by yourself and then you think uh, you are doing a very good job but then it turns out that your professor doesn't want you to do this and he wants you to do something else so just uh, have a more uh, balance yeah balance yeah. and then otherwise you, you will find that like you, you spend so much time and you feel like you devoted your time and then your professor doesn't like it then you feel frustrated uh, and then so just uh, keep uh, just showing your professor advisors uh, your outcomes uh, just frequently and maybe regularly and then you know okay what kind of feedbacks your advisor has and then you can save your time don't don't waste too much time on doing something mm -hmm. yeah. your professor doesn't want you to do yeah. 100% so you mentioned that before yeah 100% yeah 100% yeah, that's why I need to present to him that when you, oh, I came with this topic, I came with this content, what do you think? I said, oh, no, no. Because if you already write, it's too much. But if you just present the list of contents and what you try to go ahead, I said, together can decide where is the best for your thesis. And that's it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you.